Time to send it. God, it's so fast.
That was pretty tidy. Yeah, we got. True. If you do exclamation mark emotes, there's a full list of all my emotes. Ish. There's a couple I've added that I probably haven't added to that list, and I don't think some work. Are you fucking kidding me? God damn it. The worst part is it gives you a bloody thing telling you that you can't use the the command, which is like still going to get you spam. <laughs> I don't know why I've set that to like streamer only by accident probably. Makes sense for some things like clear, but that it's VIP or you know, not just regular viewer. I am permanently fish steer. And the final two emotes in that list are me.
Oh, well, the neck swims. Well, I mean, you're either a neckbeard virgin or you're a femboy trans girl getting fucked all the time. There's no in between. Those are the two options, and they are represented by the two Linux mascots. Tux, who is fat and balding, and uh, Xenia, who is hot as fuck. I have a squishy Tux sat behind my Wii. I can just about see him through the massive cables behind my screen. Ferris is a trans icon. Although, if you want to hear a joke about crabs, what's the difference between a very dirty run-down bus stop and a crab with breast implants. One is a crusty bus station, the other is a busty crust station. <laughs> it's such a good joke. Thank you, thank you. Shit, tits, bollocks, tits. Yeah, just write more rust. Surefire way to all the bitches. Fuck em. He went some unsafe code. It's like shaggy without a condom on. Honestly, if I ever wrote Rust, I think I'd just need to wrap everything in unsafe. Just the entire thing. Line one, unsafe. Yeah, but at least you get a warning. Some people think that C code that I write is safe.
Never write unsafe rust, just write really, really shit rust. Massive sheep. Truck am I on? Oh yeah. I'm getting tired now. Proper.
Bloody hell. Yeah, there's not many people played these tracks still, so top tens with a meh run are still on the cards. I don't think there's actually any easy world records left here outside of the bonus cars. I think not a lot of people have played them, but the people who have are the top people. Although you are actually fast, so you probably... I don't think it's an easy world record, but I think it's probably doable. But I still don't think I could get a world record on any of these tracks at all. No matter how much effort I put in. Well, a lot of effort, yes, but I'd actually have to learn to be fast enough to get a world record. Like, pretty much Frankie with his eyes closed, driving backwards in a non-meta car, can beat what I can put out in like an hour, if I had an hour on a track. Frankie can one-shot, probably, in a, any car. Yeah, Frankie is insane. I honestly, I've stopped caring. <laughs> I've stopped caring entirely what scores I get on these tracks. Because it's like... It really doesn't matter. If I could get a good time on one track, or improve my overall driving ability by half a percent I would take the overall driving ability by half a percent so much because that would speed up everything for the rest of this challenge
is going numb. Seventh. Well, this one ain't going to be a world record, I don't think. I am going to have to grind for a world record, probably in one of the vans, probably in a an easier category. But I think I... It would be sad if I took a photo of every single track in the game, all of my positions, and didn't have one of them say world record. Because I did get a few in vans and tri-wheelers and stuff like that, I did get a few where people just haven't really played at all. And they're definitely, definitely possible to find one that's not been pushed and pushed for a world record because my first ever I did get a world record in tri wheelers because uh, there was a time I just jumped on chose a random track drove it, it was fast violet oh no I wanted to do fast violet in the rain in reverse the longest track in the game in the tri wheeler and uh, yeah I did it and it was like three seconds off the world record with a bad run that I'm pretty sure I fell off the edge the first time I'd ever picked up the tri wheeler so I did it again and got world record So logging trucks seems harder than the rest of them. The vans are quite difficult to do because they're normal cars, pretty much. Or, well, Fun Selector drives pretty much like a very heavy Group 4 car. Um, but the Dakar has good. The logging truck has decent. The tri-wheeler hasn't got much. I yeah, probably will have to do something to get a world record in there. No, that's Das Uber Speed Van. The only car I am not going to be driving during this challenge, Das Uber Speed Van. Because there are 16 categories and 17 cars in Group B. So I've decided bollocks to the van. Because I've already done an entire categories of vans. Like, if I've got to drop one. The other option is dropping something like a Hammer V2 or something shit. You know. Middle child syndrome and all that, but, you know, you... Uh, You're not the quattro that everybody means when they say the quattro. And you're not the other quattro that the other half of people mean when they say the quattro. And then everybody argues whether it's the quattro sport one that was the group B monster. It's the icon of group B, that, you know, all the fairings and shit. Or whether it's the original quattro, which still looks like a family sedan. You just got that middle child syndrome of not actually cool, just a bit of a kind of midway improvement. But Group B hadn't been entirely deregulated yet.
Group A is pretty cool. I think I'm going to go into Group S. I think that's... Once I've done all this. We'll see if there's anything else that grabs me. Because I really like this, but... Group S, I think, doesn't get played enough. Considering that Group S is only really in... Like, you don't see many rally games with Group S in. Because it was never a, a RAN... You know, it was only prototypes. So Group S, I think, gets the raw end of the stick for not having real cars in it. But it's like you're playing a game that's... The whole point of this game is... Like, the, the thing that separates it from other rallying games is... This is a world where Group S... Group S happened and Group B was never banned and it ran its full course and Group S happened afterwards. In my head, the reason that we still go back to Group B, uh, sorry, Group A after that, and more normal cars is that the manufacturers complained that they weren't selling cars because the cars got so ridiculous in the Group S era. Group B, at the start at least, and kind of for certain manufacturers, they were still recognisable chassis of the main cars. So you still had the argument of sell on, win on Sunday, sell on Monday kind of thing. But in my head we go, you know, you go to Group N and Group A because the cars look normal. You can actually say, do you want to buy this car? Or a car that looks quite similar. Which you can't even do with the current WRC cars because they look fuck all like anything anyone's actually buying. Because SUVs are terrible rally cars. So if you look at uh, the rally Ford Puma, looks suspiciously more like a Ford Focus, which they no longer make, than the Puma in size and girth because you know one of them might be dog shit as a WRC car oh the polo WRC car is cool yeah yeah go. Group 3 is done. Where does that put me now then? So if we... That puts me at 1,152 stages done. Just another 770-odd to go. Nice, though. Cheers, Turbo.